explained uh, a minute ago. I'll move it to a smaller system, uh, a key box application, and then end up with the outlet towards towards you uh, in uh, in our Finofab facilities, which we uh, uh, launched. <coughs> so let's start with the key <coughs> technology platforms. And Michiel assisted me already that with the key technology platforms, you have three genotypic platforms which we use for our research and uh, the reasons why we do that is for these technology platforms to assist the trade platforms and to dissect and uh, understand the traits better. Now the only way to be able to do that is to obtain first phenotypes of those traits. So that's of course where the phenotyping in itself comes into play and then comes the question how best do you do that? So. The importance of phenotyping is ominous. For plant breedings, the phenotype is the final goal. That's what's being sold in the market. For us, if we want to detect a QTL, if we want to clone a gene, we need first, of course, high quality molecular markers. I'll come back in a second uh, uh, for that. But next, of course, high quality phenotypes in order to make those good quality correlations. Now, the phenotyping in itself, that's not always straightforward. The genetic, the environmental factors, they're often intertwined. You have subjective bias observations. I have one slide, but uh, Jörg uh, has shown you a little bit about uh, that al also already. And the phenotype may depend upon complex interactions. Plants, biotic agents, uh, so resistance tolerances, effects, uh, may aid into that as well. So over the last years, um, in genotyping, considerable investments have been made. So I've made a, a graph, uh, of course not uh, uh, put numbers next to it, but what I want to show is that the genotyping over the last years has obtained a certain high level of robustness. If we do something, our measurements today, next week, next year, we will get uh, uh, the same measurements in, in the SNP genotyping or in the marker genotyping. For the phenotyping, that's so not so much the case, uh, unfortunately, due to the reasons I just explained a second ago. And we think there's potential in that, and that's the reason why we wanted to push that uh, potential just a little bit to make the better correlations from here on forward. So if you want to push this potential, how do you go about it? What are the next steps to be able to do that? Um, should you continue your manual phenotyping and just have better protocols how to manually phenotype. <coughs> the pictures of you and these pictures explain uh, and give you an answer to that. Because by now, it was explained, by now we know that the center circle is identical and we know that the two red colors are identical, but it doesn't feel like it, now does it? So that's the reason why uh, manual phenotyping is, is helpful but in some cases, it's simply insufficient. So then, uh, switch to digital phenotyping. So for us, we switched to that, and we did that for the reason of the continuous objective phenotyping, the non-destructiveness of those measurements, the timely accurate measurements of the trade, and the automatic and remote control, in order to allow a cost-effective approach at the end. And lastly, and this was explained uh, in the questions of Hugh already, the measurement of the heritability of traits. If you're able to continuously measure a trait throughout the growth cycle of a plant, you're also able to uh, make an active decision on when do you want to measure a specific trait. If you want to uh, uh, do that the old-fashioned way in a destructive measurement, then that destructive measurement is the timing of the trait. With this type of systems, you have the choice on when do you wish to uh, go and measure these traits. So the heritability, the best effect of these traits, uh, becomes now here an active choice. So for us, this Lemma Tech system and, uh, and the software and, and know-how which we have built upon that is, uh, is what we have called the key track system. And let me tr start off with trying to introduce you to that system a little bit more. So as mentioned, this is based upon a belt system which moves the plants throughout the greenhouses and brings these plants to the uh, imaging chambers. When we started off with this uh, phenotyping uh, work, which we have said already back in 2007, we have made the choice on either are we going to go for this digital uh, system 
or do you want to switch and keep the plants steady in the greenhouse and move your imaging chambers and your imaging apparatus to the plants? For us, we made the choice not to do that because of the uh, high quality imaging and the high quality lighting which you're able to do in this system, you're able to have a higher reproducibility. The lighting, the camera positions, everything here is um, uh, more re robust and more reproducible because of the fact that the plants move to the, to the imaging chambers instead of the other way around. So these plants are moved to the imaging chambers as, sh as shown. And then the image is generated, stored up on the Lambda Tech server. Plants are rotated in the, uh, in the chambers. Uh, and this, in these chambers, you have uh, the, the higher quality lighting and camera positions, as just explained a second ago. Uh, once images are taken, these plants are uh, weighed and, uh, and watered from there on. So, let me take this uh, small movie to put that uh, uh, into motion, just to show you the system uh, uh, which we have installed already here at, uh, at Kijin since 2007. So for us, the same setup and the same story. These plants move throughout uh, the greenhouses to these <coughs> imaging chambers. The current system which we now have has a pot capacity of 200 plants. So we're now able to, uh, to, to measure those 200 plants. Uh, the height of these plants is about one and a half, two meters. Here's the rotation of within the imaging chambers. And then afterwards, the data analysis takes place. Uh, and in the examples I will show in the next few slides, I will zoom into that data analysis just a little bit more, because that's, of course, an integral part of the phenotype <coughs> projects as we execute them at Kiji. Correlation at the end, of course, is the next step. Now, after imaging, plants are watered, weighed, and taken back into the random location in the greenhouse. There we are. So once you have a, uh, a key track or a lambda tech physical system, is that it? Are you then done? Or how do how, uh, to phrase that question differently? How do you come from a key track system to a digital phenotyping project? Now for us, we think that you need to have uh, the next steps into play. You have to have from a good idea to a good proper work plan. How do you design your specific experiment? Then of course you need to have the physical key track run. But the key track run, the key track hardware generates images. The next step then is, is very important. How do you go from the image to a digital phenotype? How do you extract just those features which you want to have um, and which you want to measure for your experiment at that moment? And only if you have those digital phenotypes, only if you, if you have those numbers, you're able to move into the next step, the statistical correlation study, and then you're able to draw your conclusions. So for us, the system moves to a digital phenotyping project if you have each and every of these steps in place. So, once we started off with that system, the first step which we did uh, was a tomato phenotyping room. And I would like to share a little bit of that overview just to see uh, the, the, the quality of the system and how such a thing goes about. So we placed some hundred uh, tomato plants on that system and we uh, calculated the total plant area uh, through this digital phenotype setup. After that end of that experiment, the fresh weight of these plants were measured, uh, normal destructive measure, uh, just to be able to get a correlation between these predicted total plant areas and the fresh weight of these plants. Now the correlation came down to more than 90% already the first time we executed that experiment. Proving to us the, the value of the system and underlying for us the value of the system and showing that by the, uh, the overview you're able to uh, exploit this system quite, uh, quite easily already. So at the end of that experiment, those fresh weights, that comes down to a certain size and I uh, have a pixel area size here. And I shown the, the, for instance, three varieties at the end. That is the fresh weight uh, measurement and the predicted fresh weight measurements from uh, uh, from the key track system. But we didn't do that at the end of this experiment alone. Uh, we did that throughout the experiment. Those imaging, uh, and in fact, we did that uh, on a daily basis. So you're not able, only able to see the final end point of uh, of that measurements, but you're also able to. Uh, 
take a look at the system and how did these plants grow towards that end part. So if there's variation in the growth curve between the plants also. That's one tomato example. <coughs> 